Hi, I'm Dr. Stan Kucher, and I'm here to share with you some ideas of how we can improve mental health outcomes for young people. First, we have to start thinking comprehensively with a model called Pathway Through Care, because traditionally what we have done is just focused on one aspect of this pathway and just focusing on one part without addressing the integrated whole doesn't give us the outcomes that we actually need to accomplish. So the pathway through care, which I will explain in a minute, is designed to meet four specific needs. First, it has to meet the needs of young people and their families. Many young people live and grow and develop in their families. Not all young people, but we have to make sure that the pathway through care meets the needs of youth who are in or youth who are not in their families. The second thing is that it needs to be simple, sustainable, and effective. It's no good to create structures or models that are hugely complex, cost a lot of money, are silos unto themselves, and the effectiveness of which we are not certain. Even if they are very popular and trendy, we need to be careful about those kind of models. Remember that one of the most popular models that was ever created was the asylum. Maybe necessary at one point in time, but certainly has not contributed to the integration of health care and mental health care and good outcomes for young people. Third, we need to build on and strengthen existing systems. Creating yet another system or yet another isolated approach for youth mental health care doesn't help us. We have some very good systems in our society which have stood the test of time. We need to build on those systems and strengthen them, make them better able to serve the needs of young people and their families. And fourth, we need to be accountable for the outcomes and accountable for the costs. Really fundamental and necessary. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how we can actually do this through a very simple framework called the Pathway Through Care. So now that we have looked at the four components that we have to consider in this model, let's see what the model actually can look off. But first, I have to take this off. So why don't I do that right now? The model actually has four different components. And each component links directly with the next one. The first is awareness. And this means becoming familiar with the concept of mental health and mental illness. Realizing that this is not something that is in the shadows, not something to be shunned, but something to be addressed effectively in our society and in our healthcare system and in our education system. But awareness is not enough. Awareness is not the end of the conversation. Awareness is only the beginning of the conversation. And sometimes when we have awareness, we may have negative outcomes because awareness by itself doesn't give us the capacities and the competencies that we need to understand mental health and mental disorders, decrease the stigma, and improve our help-seeking efficacy. In order to do that, we need something else, and it's called mental health literacy. So I'm just going to put that here on the next box, mental health literacy, from awareness to mental health literacy. Now awareness can be used in the media, in the general public, and that's a good way to spread awareness. But it needs to be paired with mental health literacy. And mental health literacy should be actually located in schools. That's what schools do. Young people are mostly 
in schools, and schools are good at imparting literacy, so schools have to be the place in which we embed literacy on this pathway through care. The next part of the pathway here is something called access. So where do young people get an opportunity to get to care if they need it? Not all young people need specialty mental health care. Not all young people need primary mental health care. Some young people need mental health supports, encouragement, such as can be given to them by counselors. So what is the ideal place to deal with the issue of access? Why? It's in the schools. Schools are the places where most young people are. If we have a youth health center in a school, young people can attend the health center, they can address their mental health needs, they can address their physical health needs, they can address their sexual health needs, all in one place. Health for all, just down the hall. We don't have to build another structure in the community. The schools are already there, and that's where most young people are. So we have to be able to enhance the capacity of teachers and of other educators to be able to identify young people who are having a mental disorder and to help them access the care that they need. You know, schools have figured out the access problem. Healthcare has not done a good job of addressing the access problem. So the next part is actually care. Where should the care be provided and who should be doing that? And here, it's clear, young people who have mental health problems that don't need medical intervention can have that care provided in a school setting or in a primary health care setting. Young people who have mental disorders can have that mental disorder, if it's mild intensity, treated in a school setting by a primary health care provider or by a primary health care provider in an existing community clinic. And those young people who need higher level of intervention, well, they need to go to specialty health care services, which can be easily integrated into what's happening in the schools or in primary health care. When we put all these things together, the awareness, the literacy, the access, and the care, we get the pathway through care. And the reason it's called through care is because once the path is here, it links back on itself into every single component. That is the framework for the pathway through care. So now we have gone through an overview of the pathway through care for young people. We have four components, awareness, mental health literacy, access, and care provision. Putting these four components together solves the problem. Addressing only one piece of this pathway doesn't solve the problem. Is it that difficult to link schools with healthcare systems? Not at all. Is it important that teachers and educators have good mental health literacy and that they are able to teach mental health literacy in the school setting? Absolutely. Is it happening? Not very well, but as you know, we have a number of different programs which show that they are very effective and simple ways of actually doing that. Is it important that we use the schools in order to address the access issue to health care? Absolutely. And we can do that in many ways. One, very simply, is to put a youth health center into a school. We have integrated health care for all students right there. They don't have to travel a long distance. They don't have to walk 20 blocks to get there because it's in the school and that's where they are. And we have to improve the quality of care. And here we have to ensure that primary health care providers who frankly see the bulk of health care in our communities 
have the competencies and capacities to provide the care to young people when they need it. And that can be done in community-based health centers, it can be done in the schools, but it's necessary to be done. And so you see, when we put all four components together, we get a pathway through care. And it works when all four components are there. You know, it's not that we don't know what to do. It's that we are being challenged to do what we know. So why don't you join me and many others in this country and globally, and let's try to improve the pathway through care for young people. Because once we get the pathway right, we will see the outcomes that young people and their families deserve. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Stan Kucher.